speaker I have the privilege to ask everyone to thank the organizer for such a great time. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a, a, a joint work with uh, Hayden. So it's about quantum module and the detection of onions. So I guess the basic problem we want to study is uh, so if you are given a knot or a link in S3, given a knot or a link error in S3, we want to recognize this. So in particular, we want to say if the knot or link is the unknot or unlink. So in particular, this is this <coughs> So for the so that's called the unknot or unlink detection problem. So for the, the unknot or unlink detection problem, I think this was already solved in the sixties by Hack. So this Hack in the 60s. So uh, basically, he used uh, he consider a triangulation of the the knot complement and the study that's the normal surfaces in the, the triangulation. So so this gives you an answer to the uh, unknot detection problem. Uh, however, sometimes we still want some different kind of answer. So we want some, uh, uh, for example, so even the unknot detection problem is solved by Haken. Uh, we still don't know, so we, we still didn't know from Haken's answer whether the surgery on the knot give you a homotopy sphere. So, 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 that's a prop, so that was a prop, prop TP conjecture uh, solved by Krankham and Moroka. So somehow we want a different type of answer to, to this question. So we want an accessible accessible environment which distinguishes error from the unknown or unlink. <coughs> so by accessible we want uh, so we mean that the environment should be computable and uh, uh, and uh, and once you compute the environment you, you, you can tell whether the environment is the environment for the, the unknown. So for example, the fundamental group certainly uh, tells you, the fundamental group of the, the knot complement certainly tells you whether the knot is the unknot. However, uh, well, it's not practical to work with the fundamental groups. Okay, so uh, maybe the most uh, famous, uh, the, the most famous environment for knots is the Alexander polynomial. So let's briefly recall Alexander polynomial. So Alexander polynomial is a Laurent polynomial and it's uh, defined uh, by the following relation. So delta u is 1 and uh, delta l plus minus delta l minus is equal to p to the minus 1 plus minus p to 1 plus p delta l 0. Uh, so here, let's say u is the unknown. And the um, mobile will let UN be the N component on link. And uh, also, so if you have uh, if you have three diagrams, three knot diagrams, and the 
the links, so three link diagram and the, the link diagrams are oriented such that they defer if only one crossing error. So the three diagrams are more, almost identical except it one crossing. Uh, so, so this one, uh, so at, at this crossing, uh, error plus is this one, and error minus is this one, and error zero is the, the result. Mm. So if you have three such uh, links, uh, then there are exactly polynomial are related by this relation. Okay, so from this we know uh, delta u is one, and uh, it's easy to see that delta of u n is zero if n is positive. Uh, sorry, n is greater than one. So if you <coughs> Uh, so, uh, so these are the Alexander polynomial of the unlock and the unlinks. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, they don't detect the unlock or unlink. Uh, so we know there are examples of nodes which have the same Alexander polynomial as the unlock. For example, you, you can take a, a, a white high double of any node. And also, uh, there are examples of links which have zero example. For example, if the link is a split link, or more generally a, a boundary link, then the Alexander polynomial of the link is zero. So so Alexander polynomial do not so uh, so they don't distinguish the uh, not or link from the unknot or unlink. So that's the story for Alexander polynomial. Okay, another famous uh, invariant for nodes or links in the three sphere is uh, the Jones polynomial. And the Jones polynomial is defined in this way. Mm. So again, when V of U is 1, and uh, Q to the minus 2 v l plus minus q square v minus is equal to q q inverse minus q v of l zero. So, so you can define Jones polynomial in a similar way as the Alexander polynomial. Uh, so here I use the, the variable q. So if you are more familiar with the variable t, then you should note that this q is actually equal to minus square root of t. Okay, so uh, for Jones polynomial, you can compute the Jones polynomial of the unknot is one, and um, more generally, for the n component unlink, the Jones polynomial is q plus q uh, q inverse to the n minus n minus So now the question whether Jones polynomial detects the unknot is still open. So the question is still open. So this is does Jones detect the unknot? So that so this is still open. But for links, we already know uh, Jones polynomial does not detect the unlinks. So we that's not. Okay, so, so here is the example given by Cecil Thrott. Uh, so this is a two-component link, and it's a, a, a non-trivial link. But the, if you compare the Jones polynomial of this link, 
then it's the same as the Jones polynomial for the two component of gamma. So Jones polynomial does not detect uh, onyx. Uh, okay, so uh, for for the non polynomials, we basically for these two polynomials, we basically know uh, they don't detect onyx or onyx except for the case. Uh, so this question is still open. Okay. So we somehow we need more powerful invariants to detect the unknot or unix. Uh, so as we have learned in the conference, uh, there is the not flower homology. So this was introduced by Auschwitz Sabo. And by Rasmussen about 10 years ago. Uh, so, so not for our homology is a kind of generalization of the Alexander homology. Uh, so, the other characteristic of not for our homology is the Alexander homology. Uh, so, basically, if you have a link in the three sphere, mm, well, then the non floor homology of the link is a finitely generated abelian group. And this is bigraded. <coughs> so the, uh, the non floor homology can be written as the direct sum of uh, the two by the, uh, uh, the direct sum of two <coughs> samples according to the bag reading. So let's say let's call the bag reading to M and A. And they are actually in So this, uh, so this is the L absolute value is the number of components of and uh, M is called the mass of So, uh, so this is a generalization of the Alexander polynomial in the sense that the other characteristic give you the Alexander polynomial. So if k is a knot, then uh, Alexander polynomial of k can be given as sigma for m a minus one to the m's power and the t to the a's power rank of h f k hat mm. okay so that's the uh, the meaning that's the other characteristic of the Alexander polynomial of the k dot flow of homology give you the Alexander polynomial And uh, we know that there is also a generalization of a Jones polynomial uh, called the Koano homology. Uh, so this is the first time in the conference we talk about Koano homology. Okay, so uh, so it's very similar to uh, to not flow homology, and, and this was was introduced by Koano even before not flow. Uh, 
So again, if you have a link in the three sphere, then one of the homology give you a bi-graded proof. Uh, it's a finitely generated uh, abelian group. And uh, I, so the all characteristic of one of the homology give you the Jones polynomial uh, in the sense that in mm, sigma I J minus one to the S power and the Q to the J S power rank of K H I J is equal to Q plus Q So this Q, uh, so this I is called the homological gradient. And the J is called the pumping gradient. are much stronger than the corresponding not polynomials. Uh, so uh, the advantage of this homological invariant over the, the polynomial invariant is that um, for homology invariants, you can talk about the, the morphisms between the hom homologies. And uh, you, you can also talk about the spectral sequence and, uh, and, and the, the long exact sequence and so on. So it has more algebraic structure than the, the not polynomials. And also for the uh, unlock or unlinked detection problem, uh, uh, the not homologies uh, should give you a better answer than the, the, the not polynomials. So for example, for not flower homology, There is a theorem of ultra example. Uh, so I'm going to write ultra example as O and S D. So ultra example proved that if the not flower homology of the knot is equal to the not flower homology or as morphic to the not flower homology, a link oh, to the unknot. Then K is equal to the unknot. So that's a theorem of Oshkosh example. So uh, in particular, uh, so so this means that not for homology detects the unknot. And uh, for unlinks, I proved a similar result. Uh, so that is if he got a for homology of the link. Is as a morphic to a hybrid flower homology of the n component unlink, then L is equal to the n component unlink. And uh, actually, you can prove an even stronger statement. So well, we have said that hybrid uh, flower homology is, uh, or the not flower homology is a bi so the so contained in the information of not flower homology, uh, you so except the rank of the groups, you also have the bi uh, So, but uh, actually the rank itself uh, should be be sufficient to detect the unknot or unlinked. So actually, one can show that. So. Suppose the error is an n component link. Uh, then it's not hard to see that the rank of 
HF here of error is greater than or equal to equal to the n minus one's power, and uh, and the equality holds if and only if error is the n component only. So so for the case of not it's a theorem of Oshman's theorem the, for the so in the case of links the, the, it's proved by me. Uh, so 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 not flower homology give you a really good answer to the unknown or unlinked inhibition problem. Okay, now uh, we come to the world of Hawaiian homology. So for Hawaiian of homology, uh, right? So for Hawaiian of homology, uh, uh, it's a very deep theorem of Cronheim and Murufka that Hawaiian of homology detects the unknown. Uh, so they proved that. Uh, if Hawaiian of homology of uh, not is isomorphic to the Hawaiian of homology of, uh, of the unknot, then K is the unknot. And actually, if you look at the proof, they prove this more. Uh, they actually prove that uh, uh, rank of the Hawaiian of homology of a knot is equal to two if and only if k is the unknot. Okay, so the proof so for unknot detection the rank itself <coughs> suffices for the purpose. Uh, trouble if you want to extend the argument of Kronheim and Murufka to links. Uh, so there is a fact uh, due to, uh, I think probably due to Lee. The fact is uh, if R is an n component on uh, n component link, then the rank of one of homology of R is greater than or equal to two to the principal. So that's a, a result due to me. Uh, however, <coughs> so and um, and, uh, and it's not hard to see that the one of homology, or maybe the rank of the one of homology of U n is exactly equal to two to the principal. So, uh, however, if you consider the rank itself, then you will find that there are some links which have the same same rank as the one of homology of the unlinks. So, for example, mm, the rank of the one of homology of half link. is equal to 4, which is equal to the rank of the Hawaiian of homology of the full component on the So if you consider the detection problem for onlinks with the Hawaiian of homology, then, then, then not only the argument of Kronheim and Murufka the, 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 so it's not uh, right for for the case of onions, but also the possible statement you expect should not be true. So let, let me draw the Hawaiian of homology for half the link and the, the two component only. Uh, 
Uh, so, let's see. This is our IGF plane. Then for positive Hopf link, I think you have a copy of Z here, and a copy of Z here, and a copy of Z here, and a copy of Z here. Um, see, so the coordinates of this, so this coordinate is 0, minus 2. And this coordinate is minus 2, minus 4. And this one is minus 2, minus 6. So that's the hopeful link, the positive hopeful link. And now, if you consider the unknot, two component unknot, <coughs> then it's this one. So this coordinate is 0, 2. <coughs> zero minus two. Yeah. Mm. So the Hawaiian homology for the hopeful link and the, the two component unlink, they have the same rank, but uh, uh, their back readings are, are different. So in order to distinguish Hawaiian homology, uh, so to dis distinguish the Hawaiian homology of a link from the Unlink, you have to consider the hybrid. Okay, so now comes the essential difficulty, I think, in this problem. So that is, we don't know the geometric or topological meaning of the bigradians in one So the problem here is uh, we don't know. the meaning of the bigradians in Kwan. Uh, so, so recall there are two gradients, the homological gradient and the quantum gradient. But, uh, but, uh, but, but what's the meaning of the homological gradient or the quantum gradient? So they seem to be, be related to physics, but uh, probably not to geometry or topology world. However, uh, in the non-flower homology world, the bigradients in, in non-flower homology are related to some, <coughs> some meaningful geometric or topological uh, things. So let's say in non-flower homology, we know that the Alexander gradient is related to uh, so the Alexander gradient related to a certain norm and uh, the mass of gradient is related to uh, to Hopf invariant and uh, for Kaysen Walker in that. So they are really meaningful, the, the Alexander gradient and the Anamaskov gradient being not for much. homology are really meaningful. But uh, the bi gradients in Huana homology, we don't know exactly the topological geometric meaning in Huana homology. So that's uh, all right. So I guess the uh, the only way to extract the topological information from the bigradient in Hoanam homology we know is through the Jones homology. Uh, because uh, uh, well, the reason is a fact. Uh, the determinant of the, the link, the absolute value of the, the, determinant. The, determinant, the determinant of the link is equal to the absolute value of the Jones polynomial at the number square root of minus one. 
so if you know the trans so if you know the uh, back gradients, then you also know the Jones the Jones polynomial. Then you will know its value at square root of minus one. Uh, and this shall give you the determinant of the link. And the determinant the determinant of the link on the other hand uh, well so let sigma L be the uh, branch that we will cover. Double cover of the series here over L. And uh, we know uh, if. No, it's not. Uh, the determinant of uh, the link is the determinant. So if you take the cipher matrix, and uh, that's the. I think that's the um, minus, right? The determinant of. S minus minus O plus So so S is a separate matrix for the link in the, in the determinant is defined. And uh, actually it's the value of the Alexander polynomial is minus one. Okay, so, so that's the the value of the Alexander polynomial to minus one. Mm. So determinant of a, a link is related to the, the, the topology of the branch the double cover of the three sphere over the link. Uh, so in particular, if determinant of L is non zero, then the order of the first homology of the double cover is equal to the determinant. And uh, if determinant of L is zero, then that implies that the order of first homology of the double cover is infinity, or the first weighted number of the double cover is positive. So, so that that's the topological information we can extract from the. Uh, the bank gradients in the quantum homology. So even with this tiny piece of information, we, we are able to say some things about the uh, detection problem for quantum homology. So that's a theorem of Knight and me. So we proved that uh, if The Hoana for homage of a link is isomorphic to the Hoana for homage of the two component on link. Then L is the two component. Okay, so 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 recall in this case the rank itself is not uh, enough. So we have to consider the bigrading. Uh, and uh, for the two component case, we have seen the example I, I drew here, the example of Cecil's sword. So the example is a, a link, a two component link with the same uh, the same Jones polynomial as the uh, two component link. Uh, so in this case, the Jones polynomial does not detect two component link. However, the Hoana homology detects. So that's a theorem we proved a few years ago. All right. So now, uh, for the case of general n-component unlink, uh, the problem is here we don't know we don't know how to extract the topological information from the bigrades. So. Uh, to overcome the difficulty, we introduce more algebraic structure. Uh, so the way we deal with n-component unlink is we. So there is a, a module structure over some ring of one of homology over a ring. 
and I'm going to tell you how to define the module structure and, uh, and what the ring is. So there is a module structure of one of homology over a certain ring. And uh, now, uh, if you consider the module structure, uh, then actually one can prove that one of homology detects on Linux. So the theorem we prove is. So if one of homology of L, so suppose the L is an N component link, and then if one of homology of L is isomorphic to one of homology of the N component on link, then L is equal to N component. Uh, so I want to remark that we, uh, so in this case we don't need the bigree. Uh, so I guess if you look at the definition of the uh, uh, the one of uh, uh, the module structure, then actually the information of the relative library is encoded in the, uh, the module structure. Uh, uh, so somehow we know the relative library, but we don't need the absolute library. to explain the module structure on Hoano homology. Uh, so to do that, I need to, to remind you the definition of Hoano homology. So, let's see. Where should I start? So let's recall Hoano homology. So we start with this ring. A is Zx x over x squared. And uh, on this string, so there is a multiplication. So that's just the standard multiplication. A tensor, A to A. So, so that's a multiplication in the ring. And uh, there is also a co-multiplication, a co-co-product. A to A tensor. And this is defined by letting delta 1 is equal to 1 tensor x plus x tensor 1. And the delta x is equal to x tensor x. So you have a product and you have a co-product. Now suppose you have a, a knot, so a link L, and the D is a diagram. So what you do is at every crossing you can resolve the, the link. So suppose you have a crossing like this, then there are two ways to resolve it. So I guess one way is this, and the other way is this. So this is called the zero resolution, and this is called the one resolution. So let's say the diagram has C crossings. So the, uh, if there are C crossings, then uh, given so for any I in the zero or one C, uh, there exists a complete <coughs> resolution. 
exclusion of D. And then let's say we call this <coughs> we call this resolution DI. So we basically if every crossing we choose a way to resolve the link diagram. Then since there are C crossings and at each crossing there are two choices. So we can can resolve this. So let's see. Let's look at one example. The example of the two component half link. Uh, so let's label the two crossings. Let's call this crossing one and this crossing two. So so there are zero zero. There are four different uh, different possible resolutions. So zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So if you do zero crossing at both, uh, the, the zero resolution at both crossings, then what you get is this one. So we should get. Yeah, So that's the zero zero resolution. Oh, oh no. Right. Okay. That's the zero zero resolution. And uh, for zero one resolution, you want to do zero resolution here and one. And the one zero resolution we want to do is this one. And the one one resolution is this one. So if you completely resolve the C crossings, then you get a diagram for uh, for unlink. So this so this complete <coughs> resolution of the unlink is called the DI. So that's so that's a cube of resolution. <coughs> so so actually they lie on a cube. So this is a, a two-dimensional cube. And in general, you can arrange the, the resolutions of it is the, the vertices of a C-dimensional cube. Okay, now at each vertex of the cube, we define CI to be the tensor product of, of A. So you take, uh, so, you, so this is the number of components in DI. So you take this many uh, of, uh, of this, so this copies of A and take the tensor product. So this, this gives you a, a, a group. So let's see. Mm, so for example, for this one, this is a two component uh, only. So you take A tensor square, and for this one is A, and this one is A, and this one is a tensor square. Mm. And also for each edge, so for each edge, uh, so here, so let's say this edge is from i to i prime. And uh, here, i prime has, uh, so i prime is equal to i for all. Uh, for all entries except at one part to one entry, and at this entry, i prime is say uh, uh, one, and i is zero. So let's say i is probably something, and somewhere is zero, and i prime should be all the same as i. 
but the somewhere is one instead of zero. So you change your one zero in I two to one in you know. So so this so these are all the edges for, uh, for the cube. So for each edge, so each edge correspond to different resolutions at one crossing. So for this uh, two for these two two crossings, uh, so for these two different resolutions, so if uh, so you can see the picture. So the picture is you change from locally you change from this to this. <coughs> So if the if this uh, uh, so if this change merges two loops, if merge merges two different loops, two loops to one, then what we do is we define uh, so we define a map. So that D I I prime here a multiplication from say A tensor from D I to A tensor. So you take a multiplication for the two. So so if you merge two loops to one, then this, so these are two different loops. So this loop corresponds to maybe one copy of A, and this corresponds to another copy of A. And this map is a multiplication for this, for this, uh, on these two copies of A. And uh, if we, so if this transformation splits to one loop, Into two, then we let d i i prime be delta from from a tensor d i to a tensor. <coughs> okay, so. Basically, for each vertex, you have a group CI, and for each edge, there is a map uh, DII prime. So, in our example, we have so the cube is a square, and uh, this is a tensor A. This is A. This is A tensor A. This is, so this map is M, M, and this map is third. third. Okay, so uh, for each vertex you have a group C, and for each edge you have a map D I I prime. Now we define so. Now the we define C. C K H of D is the direct sum of all these vertex groups, and uh, D is the sum <coughs> plus or minus D I I prime. So, so that's uh, the chain complex for kind of homology. So this gives you a, a chain complex, and uh, so the kind of homology for this knot uh, or for this link is the homology for this chain. <coughs> And uh, there is a way to define the bi-gradients. 
Okay, so that's uh, the way how you define the Hohano homology. And then now, so how do you get the uh, how do you get the module structure? So the point is, if we so if we pick a marked point, the P in the diagram. And such that the marker point is different, so, so it's different from the, the crossings. So if you click on mark the point, P is a diagram. Then this gives you a marker point, a marker point, point, oh, let's see. I in each in each resolution. So for example suppose you pick this mark point and then probably for some resolution it will give you a mark point on one of the loop and maybe for another complete resolution give you another point. So for each resolution, it, it gives you a mark a point on the resolution. And in particular, the marker point shall specify you a particular loop in this uh, in this computer resolution. Now we define define d. So we define a map x from c k c k h d to itself by multiplication by x on the factor <coughs> the a factor corresponding So maybe uh, I can define x for this for each resolution. So c i to itself. So for each resolution, you can define x. So this x is just a multiplication by x on the a factor corresponding to the loop, and uh, then x on c h c k h d is just so it's just uh, you CK is a direct sum for OC and uh, for each sum you take this you, you take this uh, the X the multiplication the X on the corresponding different. So for each uh, so the point is for uh, so if you pick a mark point then you can define a map from CI to itself. And uh, so the fact is, if P1 and P2 in the same component, <coughs> of L, then actually X, so you can define a, a map for uh, P1 and a map for P2, then X is homotopy equivalent. Uh, so, so this does not. So the map x does not depend on the choice of the mark point, as long as you choose the mark point on one component. Uh, 
And now what you do is you can pick a marked point uh, uh, on each component. So on each component. <coughs> So here i is 0, 1 to n minus 1. So on each component li, you can pick a point, a point pi. So this defines you n maps, so you get n maps x0, x1, x n minus 1, and they all act on. CPH. And uh, so it's not hard to prove that they commute and also the square of any xi is equal to zero. Uh, so xi, xg, so one can prove they commute and also xi square is equal to zero. And also there are chain maps, so they induce maps on the corresponding Kohanov homology. So they also induce maps on Kohanov homology. So in this sense, um, okay, let's say uh, we work with, we work over F, which is in modular Z. Okay, so if we work over F, then actually one can prove that one of homology L is a module over this three, F x0, x1, x n minus 1 mod x0 square, x1 square, x minus 1 square. Okay, so one of homology of a link actually has a, a nice <coughs> module structure over, over this module. So, so this module structure was actually already defined by Hwano, but he, he didn't emphasize the uh, the case for n common links. He only talk about the case for for one for one mark point, and uh, he didn't mention the, the case for n mark point. So so this gives you a nice module structure for one of homology, and uh, this module structure does tell you something different. Uh, for two, uh, for links. So, for example, <coughs> for example, uh, if you have the quantum homology of the n component on link, so let's call this lambda n. So, if you have the quantum homology for the n component on link, then this is isomorphic to lambda. However, um, so in particular. You can see that the, the map x0 is not equal to x1 as a map from quantum homology to itself. So the action of the two variables are different. Uh, however, quantum homology for hopeful link, um, so that's not actually not equal to lambda n. And, uh, in this case, we can see that x0 is equal to x1 as maps from quantum homology to itself. So this gives you something, uh, some more structure than just the quantum homology. And uh, our theorem is that if the quantum homology of Link is isomorphic to lambda n. Then, so let's say L is n component link. If a quantum homology of L is isomorphic to lambda n, then L is equal to the n component on So that's a answer. Okay, so I guess I don't have time to talk about it. examples no 
one where the, the ranks are the same and the, the, and the Jones polynomial are the same? Or is it possible that those two things together could... could yeah, the, yeah, I think that's possible. Uh, yeah, I think that's possible. I do you use the uh, Kronheimer work case itself? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we need to use Kronheimer work case itself. Yeah, otherwise, so if you take a, so if a knot has the same corner commodity as the unknot, then you take a, the disjoint union of n such knots, then you can distinguish. Yeah, so it's possible. Thank you.